It's another edition of Time About the Movies, and today we're taking a look at the films of February 18th, 2000. we got four movies to look at today, so let's go ahead and jump on into it. We'll start off with the biggest new release of the weekend, and that is Bruce Willis and Matthew Perry in the comedy, The Whole Nine Yards. So the story of the whole nine yards is that, yeah, Matthew Perry is this mild-mannered dentist who travels to Chicago to inform a mob boss about the whereabouts of his new neighbor, a former hitman with a price on his head, played by Bruce Willis. You also see Natasha Henstrens is in here, Amanda Peed, Michael Clark Duncan, Rosanna Arquette, Kevin Pollack. Um, uh, this is a film directed by Jonathan Lynn. He's made a lot of really good movies, especially in the 90s, stuff like uh, great stuff like My Cousin Vinny. In fact, his whole career in general has been mostly pretty good. I mean, he's made Clue, My Cousin Vinny, uh, The Distinguished Gentleman, Sergeant Bilko's a very underrated film, as is Trial and Error. Uh, he's a very good director, and he, uh, only a guy like him could make this movie work as well as it does here, and it's not a perfect movie all the way through. It has a very sitcom -y plot to it. I mean, Matthew Perry's just pretty much playing kind of the same equivalent to Chandler Bing, except he's a little bit more screwier than he is on Friends, but... um. Not every joke in this movie works, but when this movie makes you laugh, it makes you laugh pretty damn hard. Like, there's a great moment in the beginning of the film where uh, Matthew Perry's character is hated by his wife and his mother-in-law. He hates his life. He's about to go to work, and then as he turns the car on, he turns it off, and then there's just this brief moment of just pause, and then all of a sudden he just snaps and goes like, boom, 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 on the thing, like hitting his head on the on the car, on the, um, the uh, steering wheel on the car, and the, and the, he hear the horn going off, going, brr, 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 and he does that once, not that, he does that not just once, but twice in that one scene, it's really hilarious stuff, man, I love that scene so much, that's one, that's my favorite scene in the movie, but, um, uh, Bruce Willis and Matthew Perry work off each other very well overall, they are very funny in the roles that they're in, they have a good chemistry together, and, it's what it's one of the things that keeps these movies together. I mean, the whole ten yards is not a very good movie, the sequel to this, but it has a great moment between the two of them that makes me keep that movie in my collection because I just love that scene in the bar where they're sitting there with the pyramid, the pyramid of shot glasses, and Bruce Willis is just like, "What is this thing that put right here?" And, and Matthew Perry's just like, "That's the thing we've been building for the last three hours." It's just like, "Get it out of here!" Why? Because I hate it. And then Bruce Willis just headbutts into it like. Little moments like that make these movies at least watchable. I really like the first one, this one a lot more than the second one, obviously. The second one is not a good movie. One, it's a PG-13 sequel to an R-rated film. But it's just a funny movie, man. Like, there's... It's very silly. It knows it's very corny at times. It knows its story is very sitcom-y. But... It just works because there's a, there's a really good cast involved in here. You get is they don't overstay their welcome. They know exactly what to do to make you laugh, and the movie works for itself on its own merits. And again, it's with this director, Jonathan Lynn. I think that the film helps the film carry more of a weight to it than most films like this would. I mean, I mean, I don't think any other director probably could have made this work as well as they as Lynn could, but. Um, the film overall is good. It's not a great comedy by any means. It's not one of the great comedies you ever see, but it does more than enough to make you laugh at, at least a couple of times in the film to make you satisfied that you saw it. It's got a great cast to make itself work. It's a really fun film. I enjoy it a lot. Um, like I said, not a great film overall, but a funny film overall. I really do like it a lot. So, so that's the whole nine yards. Well, let's move on to another comedy with another Friends star. I mean, I, mean, this, I guess this is a weekend where Matthew Perry and Lisa Kudrow uh, fought against each other's box office because she's in this next movie, Diane Keaton's Hanging Up. So the story here is that you have Georgia, Eve, and Maddie, played by Diane Keaton, Meg Ryan, and Lisa Kudrow. They're adult sisters. Georgia is the editor of her own wildly successful self-titled women's magazine. She strives for publicity at any cost. Party planner Eve is the mother hen of the group, not only of her own family, but also of her siblings and father as the mother, uh, Pat not only emotionally left their father when they're divorced, but her daughters as well. And Maddie is a vacocious... Vacocious, V-A-C-U-O-U-S, I think I'm pronouncing that right. Vacocious soap opera actress who has always struggled for her own identity. Despite being as bu busy with her own life as the others, Eve is the only one of the three who deals with the long-term hospitalization of their cantankerous 70-year-old father, played by Walter Matthau. I think this was actually the last film he did before he passed away, too, where he enters the early stages of dementia and the associated outcomes of their hospitalization. Eve's caring for Lou is, dis is despite an especially hurtful incident with him several years earlier. As the emotional aspects of looking after Lou becomes, m becomes more and more stressful, Eve has to figure out how to maintain her own sanity while dealing with her sisters who believe that they are part of the father's care while they don't lift a finger to help. Um, 
it's a story that really kind of a lot of people probably can relate to with their old, with their older si families and all that, with older family members and all that. And there is kind of a little bit of a nothing in common vibe that Tom Cr Tom Hanks Jackie Gleason film that came out in the '80s. That film worked a whole lot better than this film does, which, despite the fact that it has so many good talents on the screen as well as behind the scenes, not just Diane Keaton as the director, but Nora and Delia Efron wrote this film. The film really struggles to get going, and I think it's mostly because the script just isn't really that strong, and I don't think this book is as well received as I think a lot of people made it out to be. I think it's only got made because it was written by Nora Ephron's sister, and of course Nora Ephron is a name at the box office that people will come and see for a film like this, especially with other names as well, like Diane Keaton, Lisa Kudrow, and Meg Ryan. This was a somewhat big, a somewhat decent hit overall. I mean, made back about $51 million, which isn't bad considering the film only cost $40 million to make, so... It did make its money back regardless, and you also have really good talents all over this film. Adam Arkin as well stars in this, Cloris Leachman, Edie McClure, Tracy Ellis Ross. Just a strong cast overall here, but kind of unlike what The Whole Nine Yards was able to do, The Whole Nine Yards still has funny moments in it. I don't think this film really has a keen eye of making you laugh all the way through. I think it just feels like it's trying too hard to be something that's it's it's too hard to be more of a chick flick than actually being something that's actually a funny film and with the talent that they have on here you really do expect a whole lot more from this and sadly the movie doesn't quite deliver on that unfortunately it's a great t great town all over the board here but just a, a product that doesn't come together when it's all said and done so yeah unfortunately this one is not a good film so so that's hanging up. So let's go ahead and move on to our next film, the first of two Vin Diesel films that came out this weekend. Uh, this is him as Riddick in Pitch Black. So the story here is that you have, you're have you following this dangerous criminal named Riddick, played by Vin Diesel, who's being transported to prison in a spacecraft, and escapes when the spaceship is damaged by comet debris and crash lands on an empty desert planet. When predatory creatures begin attacking the survivors, Riddick joins forces with them to escape the planet. Uh, this is actually the last film that was produced by uh, Polygram Film before they eventually merged into Universal, and of course you, they became USA Films, and then that would later, of course, go on to become Focus Features. Um... Uh, this is directed by David Tuohy, who also did the other Riddick films, and um, if basically it's a film that has a lot of things that a, a sci-fi film of this caliber, a sci an original sci-fi film, has a lot to it. There are some elements in here that are really, really good, and then the elements where they try to take something from a previous sort from previous films as part of inspiration when they when it rears its ugly head it does lead to a mostly mixed bag of a movie i think the cool aspects of the movie are vin diesel as riddick you can see why this character went on to have his own franchise with uh, the next film being the chronicles of riddick which was not a big success but then riddick came after that which was slightly better than the chronicles of riddick but that's not really a saying a whole lot i mean this idea of riddick is a cool character and i think it's a i just think he needed a better series of films to really show that potential with it, because Vin Diesel does play the role very well. The film has some really cool visuals to it. There's some good ideas in terms of the story. Just the execution overall really does not work in the long run. It feels like a film that really struggles to get itself going when it matters the most. And I think it really, tr when it tries to take from other source material, it definitely shows on screen. And unfortunately, it doesn't really give you what this type of a story would ex you expect the story to have, unfortunately. But, um... It's not a bad movie, per se. There are a lot of moments that I did like about the film. I just wish that the film was more clear together when in, the, in terms of the script and all. But um, at least Riddick was a cool character, and Vin Diesel shows that he's got range as an actor, as we'll see with our next film that we're going to look at right now, and that is Boiler Room. The story of Boiler Room is that you have this college dropout played by Giovanni Ribisi who runs an illegal casino from his rented apartment. Driven by his domineering father's disapproval as an illegitimate existence and his desire for serious wealth, he suddenly finds himself seduced by the opportunity to interview as a trainee stockbroker for a re recent acquaintance played by Nikki Cat. Walking into the office of J.T. Martin, a small-time brokerage firm out the outskirts of New York, he gets an aggressive cameo performance from Jim played by Ben Affleck that sets the tone for a firm clearly placing money above all else. 
Uh, Steph's fractured relationship with his father and flirtatious glances from a love interest played by Neil Long are enough to keep Steph motivated in his newfound career. As he begins to excel and develop a love for the hard sell and high commissions, a few chance encounters lead Steph to question the legitimacy of the film firm's operations, placing him once again at odds with his father and what remains of his mortality. It has homages to Wall Street and Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, and it's a, de a directorial debut for Ben Younger, who's directed films such as Prime and also be Better Than uh, Bleed For This, which Bleed For This... Eh, it was all right for what it is, but I really like Prime. I think that's a very underrated comedy with Meryl Streep and Uma Thurman and, and Brian Greenberg. It came out a couple years after this, but like I said before, man, this movie shows Vin Diesel was actually a, is actually a really good actor. Like he really is trying to do some stuff in this movie that you don't. It's like you don't associate with the Fast and Furious or Guardians of the Galaxy or even with the Riddick films. Like he's proven time and time again that he is. A very solid actor overall, and he's working with a great ensemble of BC, Long, uh, Affleck, Cat, Scott Kahn, Tom Everett Scott, Rod Rifkin, Jamie Kennedy, and uh, this director Ben Younger does a pretty good job of handling this. Um, I do kind of wish he made some more films because he's shown his potential and range as a director over the years, but. Yeah, this film takes a lot from from previous from previous films. Like it has a lot of inspirations from stuff like Wall Street, Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a little bit of the story of the Billionaire Boys Club too, as well, thrown in here as well. But it does make for a very intriguing film that really is not that long, all things considered. It's only about two hours long, which it seems long, but it moves at a smooth enough pace where you do get the gist of what they're trying to go for here. And you're kind of interested in how it's going to turn up in the end. I think it's a well-made film overall. Definitely a very underrated film with a lot of great talent involved here. If you haven't seen Boiler Room, I highly recommend checking it out. It's definitely worth a watch. And so with that said, we wrap up another edition of Time About the Movies. When we meet next time, we have two movies, uh, Ben Affleck and John Frankenheimer's Reindeer Games. And we also have a star-studded cast in Wonder Boys. Uh, two films we'll look at next time. Uh, but until then... Thank you very much for watching, and if you want to see more videos like this, please hit the playlist on the next page, check out the previous episode, and uh, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this on this channel. So with that said, I am off, I will see you guys next time, and until then, thanks for watching, I'll see you next time, take care.